The old man, Hassan Sabah, also known as Lord of the Mountain, formed an elite secret society called the School of the Hashishi, or Assassins. A popular theory links the word Hashish, which is a term for cannabis, to the word Hashishin, implying that they were named after the hash that they allegedly consumed. Unlike alcohol, Islam did not prohibit cannabis. Another hypothesis for the name stems from Assassin, which in Arabic means guardians, and some scholars have insisted that this is to be the true origin of the word assassin, guardians of the secrets. In Persia, or modern Iran, from the highest recesses, over 2100 meters above sea level, of the thousand-year-old impenetrable mountain fortress of Alamut, meaning Eagle's Nest, Saba, the Lord of the Mountain, directed a covert brotherhood of fearless, hashish-smoking warriors who were completely dedicated to his undisclosed cause, willing to carry out his every order, and if necessary, die for him, willingly and without hesitation. Born in the Persian city of Qom in 1050s, Hassani Sabal preached absolute devotion to a transcendental God. The family who raised him were from the Shia sect, known as the Twelvers. The term Twelver refers to its adherents' belief in the Twelve Divinely Ordained Leaders, also known as the Twelve Imams, and in the Mahdi, the Guided One, who will return as the Redeemer of uh, Islam and who will rule the world. There is also a branch of Shia Islam whose adherents are known as the Seveners. So they differ from the Twelvers in the identity of their appointed spiritual successor, or Imam, who possesses special political authority over their community. Now the Bektashi Sufi order shared the esoteric belief in the Twelve Imams and was very influential and widespread in the Ottoman Empire. And having numerous lodges scattered throughout Anatolia, they kept their core beliefs secret from outsiders, from non-initiated Muslims, and Hassani Sabah was very well versed in these same uh, core inner alchemical secrets. Within his mountain fortress of Alamut, Lord Sabah built the legendary Garden of Earthly Delights, which would play an important role in the initiation rites of the assassins uh, the garden lay peacefully secluded in a beautiful uh, valley nestled between two high mountains. Here he had imported exotic plants, birds few had ever seen before, and unusual animals from all over the world. Luxurious palaces of marble and gold decorated with beautiful paintings and fine silk furniture surrounded the lush gardens and streams of milk, wine, and honey allegedly flowed throughout this earthly paradise, while fountains gushed with wine or pure spring water. Lord Sabah gave his initiates spiked food and drink, and after the powerful potion of opium and hashish knocked them out, they would be carried into the sacred garden while in a deep sleep and when the initiate awoke from his slumber, a host of young beautiful virgins would greet him, singing and dancing and playing lovely flutes with other instruments for him. As Robert Anton Wilson describes it, and I quote, Welcome to paradise, they sang as the awakening initiate gazed about in wonder. By the magic of the Holy Lord Hassan, you have entered paradise while still alive. And they fed him exotic imported paradise fruit, far sweeter and stranger than the local fruit he had known before. And they showed him the animals of paradise, imported from as far away as Japan in some cases. 
creatures far more remarkable than those ordinarily seen in their local region. The initiate would be covertly fed more hashish and opium during the experience to ensure the maximum effect on his psyche. After this opium was introduced and began to flow into the bloodstream, the young candidate would sleep again, they would then be removed from the Garden of Delights and returned to the banquet hall of Lord Hassan. There they awoke and after pledging their devotion became one of the illuminated. This technique proved very effective. Hassan could demand absolute loyalty from his followers with no questions asked. Another version of this story comes to us from Marco Polo uh, from his visit to Alamut in 1273 and he says and I quote the old man kept at his court such boys of 12 years old as seemed to him destined to become courageous men. When the old man sent them into the garden in groups of four, ten, or twenty, he gave them hashish to drink. They slept, then they were carried sleeping into the garden where he had them awaken. When these young men awoke, they found themselves in the garden with all these marvelous things. They truly believed themselves to be in paradise, and these damsels were always with them in song. They received everything they asked for, so that they would never have left the garden of their own free will. And when the old man wished to kill someone, he would take him and say, go and do this thing. I do this because I want to make you return to the paradise. And the assassins would go perform the deed willingly. This was only a small part of Hassan's system, which he had divided into levels or degrees. Sabah was a noted alchemist. So part of the curriculum for the future assassins involved mastering occult methods for reaching higher planes of consciousness. Of course, they also learned how to properly kill a man with poison or a dagger. Initiates learned multiple languages as well as the dress and manners of merchants, monks, soldiers. Moreover, they learned to fake the beliefs and devotion of every major religion. And in this way, the assassin could pretend to be anyone from a well-to-do merchant to a Sufi mystic, a Christian, a common soldier. The assassins persisted for over a hundred years after Sabah's death, but the son of Genghis Khan finally sieged and conquered Alamut in 1256. But Sabah's chief minister was ordered to write a complete history of the assassins based on records in the Alamut library, and this is the work that supplies most of the historical data about the order. During the Crusades, the assassins fought both for and against the Crusaders, likely whichever suited their agenda at the time. So as a result of this contact, the Crusaders brought back to Europe the assassin system, which numerous secret societies in the West would adopt or mimic. The Knights Templars, the Society of Jesus, uh, Priory de Sion, the Freemasons, the Rosicrucians, they all owe their organizational efficiency to the old man Hassan. In fact, the Illuminati had their origins in the mystical aspect of the Assassin Order. And although most equate the Illuminati with the Bavarian Illuminati, it's really a revised version of the Assassin system. Even our modern assassination cults like CIA, Mossad, they've incorporated many of the Assassin's techniques into their methodologies. In a CIA training manual titled Study of Assassination, it contains traces of the assassin's influence throughout, and the document even mentions Hassan Sabah by name. So, you know, the, the Mossad former motto happens to be, by way of deception, thou shalt do war. As I said, the Knights Templar learned how to create a mystery school from these, these cults, and when the Knights Templar arrived in the Middle East, the Sufis had already established numerous mystery schools which were a synthesis of those in the ancient world. So the Templars created their own synthetic mystery school known as the Holy Grail Mystery School and they wove into this mystery school much of the alchemical wisdom that they learned from these various traditions as well as esoteric wisdom from Kabbalah and both the Greek and Egyptian mystery schools. In his book originally published in Germany in 1924 
the secret practices of the Sufi Freemasons, the Islamic teachings at the heart of alchemy, Rudolf von Seppendorf purports to deliver inner Masonic practices from the Bektashi order of Sufis. The book is mainly an esoteric interpretation of Masonic hand signs, but it also includes abbreviated letters found at the beginning of some of the Quran's chapters, Arabic letter mysticism and vowel chanting. And he claims that the basic idea of this sect is that there's secrets that are revealed in these words that are made up of sounds or letters with accompanying numerical values. And these are made manifest in the human body through certain exercises that he claims make up essential components at the heart of alchemy. In this context, the word alchemy refers not to converting base metals, but to spiritual alchemy, transformation of, of the soul. So the, these almost gigong-like exercises make up a lengthy initiatory routine based around this Bektashi internal alchemy and it combines four Masonic hand signs with specific vowels and accompanying movements. As I said, the Knights Templar adopted these inner alchemy techniques and the European Freemasons preserved them. Still part of the Masonic mysteries, these Sufi spiritual practices have the goal of transforming the practitioner along the lines of Masonic moral allegory. My name is Robert Sepper. I'm an anthropologist and author, and I invite you to explore some suppressed mysteries with me in an attempt to unlock their riddles which have eluded any serious consideration in mainstream academia. Species with amnesia, our forgotten history, gods with amnesia, subterranean worlds of inner earth, the occult secrets of Vril, and 1666, Redemption Through Sin. I appreciate all of the positive feedback, and I thank you very much for listening.